Hello! Thank you for playing my video and in this way attending my talk. My name is Shana Skakoon Sparling and today I'm here to tell you about my work looking at social support and STBBI or sexually transmitted bloodborne infection transmission behaviors among HIV negative gay bisexual and other men who have sex with men. I have no conflicts of interest to declare. Uh, and I'd like to take a moment now to acknowledge our amazing community stakeholders, our universities who support us, and importantly, our funders who support us, as well as our engaged study participants and volunteers, without whom we'd have no data and um, we wouldn't be able to run this study. So thank you all so much for your support. Speaking of support, um, let's start out my presentation by talking about the importance of social support. Social support includes tangible, emotional, and or informational support from family and friends. Having sources of social support means that you have people in your life that you can talk to when you're feeling bad, celebrate with when you're feeling happy, or turn to for advice when you aren't sure what to do. Higher social support is associated with better health outcomes for everyone, but also for gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men, or GBM. But members of sexual minority groups like GBM are also more likely to experience harassment and rejection in their families and peer networks, which can lead to feelings of social isolation and lower perceived social support. Given that high social support is associated with positive health outcomes for GBM and anti-gay harassment is associated with poor health outcomes for GBM, we wanted to further explore how social support might be related to, to the factors associated with these positive health outcomes. So we hypothesized that social support would be negatively associated with sexual risk-related behaviors like engaging in condomless anal sex or CAS without PrEP. We also hypothesized that social support would have a moderating effect on the association between anti-gay harassment and CAS without PrEP among HIV-negative GBM. We were interested in looking specifically at CAS without PrEP because this is a behavior that increases risk for bacterial STIs and for HIV. Many GBM feel that they're sufficiently caring for their sexual health by engaging in PrEP-protected sex, so we wanted to remove this as a potential compound from our analyses. These data were collected using the ENGAGE study. ENGAGE is a mixed-method cohort study that's being conducted in Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal. The ENGAGE study used respondent-driven sampling to recruit guys who are at least 16 years of age and who reported having had sex with another man within the past six months. Participants in the ENGAGE study complete a computer-assisted questionnaire in either French or English and do nurse-assisted biomedical testing to detect STIs and HIV. For the data we're going to be working with today, um, we used only the guys who self-reported being HIV negative and who reported that their last sexual encounter was not with a main romantic partner. We restricted our sample to only these guys because people often have established patterns of behavior with their main partner and often have altered perceptions of sexual risk when it comes to sex with their main partner. So we wanted to remove this potential confound as we looked at whether or not these guys had engaged in PrEP-protected sex at their last sexual encounter. All right, let's take a look at the measures that we used. Social support was measured using the social support survey instrument. This instrument measures perceived emotional and informational support, tangible support, affectional support, and positive social interactions. And these are combined into an overall functional social support index. So this scale includes items like, do you have someone you can count on to listen to you when you need to talk? Do you have somebody who hugs you? Do you have somebody to do something enjoyable with? And responses to these items are scored from a range of one, which would be available all of the time, or none of the time, to five, which would be available all of the time. The average score for our sample was 3.7. So it looks like a lot of our guys are, are reporting pretty good levels of social support, which I'm happy to see. We looked at anti-gay harassment using the heterosexist harassment, rejection, and discrimination scale. This looks at the frequency that guys report having experienced heterosexist harassment, rejection, and discrimination within the past year. And it includes items like how many times have you been treated unfairly by your coworkers, fellow students, or colleagues because you are a gay or bisexual man? How many times have you been re rejected by your family because you are a gay or bisexual man? 
How many times have you been made fun of or picked on or pushed or shoved or hit or threatened with harm because you are a gay or bisexual man? Responses to these items are uh, range from one, this event never happened in the last year, to six, the event happened almost all of the time in the past year. The average score for our sample is pretty low, it's 1.9. To analyze these data, I conducted univariate logistic and linear regression analyses to examine the association of social support scores with factors related to sexual health. I also conducted a multivariate hierarchical logistic regression to explore whether social support scores moderate the association between anti-gay harassment scores and CAS without PrEP, using an interaction term to detect the moderation. So let's dive into the results now. Higher social support was associated with increased engagement in several different sexual health behaviors. So um, as we hoped to see, perceived social support was associated, higher perceived social support, was associated with a lower likelihood of engaging in CAS without PrEP, it was also associated with an increased likelihood of obtaining STI testing within the past 12 months, um, an increased likelihood of endorsing HIV and engaging in HIV risk reduction strategies, as well as greater frequencies of talking with partners about their HIV status. Higher social support um, among GBM was also uh, associated with more sex partners and higher sexual satisfaction. So it might be that the precautions these men are taking to protect their sexual health allows them to enjoy their encounters more and allows them to feel more comfortable having more partners. Higher social support was associated with a lower likelihood of having experienced anti-gay harassment over the past year, which is what we hoped to see. Um, but counter to our hypotheses, we didn't find any evidence that social support buffers against the effects of anti-gay harassment. This might be due to the types of anti-gay harassment uh, in our scale, they might be less prevalent in the daily lives of urban GBM, and in fact a large proportion of our GBM reported experiencing none in the past year. So it could be that this scale wasn't quite tapping into what we were um, hoping to get at, looking at identity-related stressors in the daily lives of GBM. However, in conclusion, we did find that HIV-negative GBM with higher perceived social support have more partners but are taking more steps to protect themselves from HIV and tend to be more satisfied with their sexual experiences overall. Although it's still unclear how social support might interact with factors related to minority stress among GBM, in our future work, we will continue to explore the, associ the associations between social support and other factors related to minority stress among Canadian GBM, um, looking at factors like identity concealment and internalized homophobia. So stay tuned for these um, new analyses in, uh, in the not too distant future. Um, all right, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope that you uh, enjoy or have enjoyed the rest of this virtual conference. And I also hope that we'll be able to see each other soon in, in person. In the meantime, uh, take care and thank you again for your time and attention.